Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to hurl a few tomatoes at Tarkov after everyone else on the internet has had their go. I've always wanted to do that. It seems like a lot of fun. Unfortunately, it seems like Tarkov is it's pretty much buried under a giant pile of rotting vegetables at this point, but it's a hell of a story. And at least by now, most of the controversy has run its course, so we can tell the full thing. Uh, which means we have a whole tale of rug pulls and misdirections and one of the worst corporate responses to an upset community we have ever seen. It's truly a tale that's got it all, so let's get started. Last week, the multiplayer tactical shooter Escape from Tarkov stirred controversy among its devoted community when it announced the addition of PvE gameplay. Oh man, that sounds so cool, Lawrence. I'm actually really excited to try that out. I, yeah, I, I love PvE. Uh, yeah, I love no, shooting I, at like targets that are designed to be shot. Anyway. Uh, but uh, uh, hold on, hold on, Lawrence. I think there's just one problem. Yeah, there, there's a few. Yeah, <laughs> The feature is only available to those willing to spend $250 on a new bundle called the Unheard Edition. Now this announcement caused a huge uproar because players who previously bought the Edge of Darkness Edition have been promised all future DLC for free. That's me. I, I purchased the uh, EOD edition years and years ago. Um, but uh, Lawrence, hold on. It gets worse. <laughs> uh, no, not only is the $250 bundle all digital, you don't really get a t-shirt or a John Tarkov, you know, stand up or anything like that. It also includes paid boosts that make your character functionally superior. Pay to win stuff like a larger stash, expanded pockets, more slots on the in-game flea market. Yep. You can't put a price on big pockets. Uh, <laughs> but that sucks. It sucks. Uh, and it gets even worse than that. Charlotte, tell us why. The Unheard Edition, what is this? Some of my less popular songs? <laughs> okay. <laughs> For some background, Escape from Tarkov has been in early access since 2017, with developers at Battlestate Games seeking new revenue streams to sustain the project over the last seven years. One strategy was the now discontinued Edge of Darkness, which charged $100 for a season pass that promised all future DLC at no additional cost. Get that? All future DLC. Well, or not. This isn't some long forgotten version of the game either. Tarkov developers Battlestate Games delisted the Edge of Darkness version January 7th of this year, just over three months ago. So when players discovered they wouldn't be receiving that new PVE update and that accessing it would require paying another $250, which is two and a half times the cost of the EOD edition, the backlash was very, very fierce. Justifiably. Uh, a quick clip of the game's Discord server showed that the community was absolutely up in arms about the change. Yeah, that's that's enough. That's galling, you know? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it really is. PC gamer writer Jake Tucker, an avid player of the game, wrote, It's starting to feel like I might finally escape from Tarkov myself. <laughs> And never look back. <laughs> that's that's fun. You know, we, we, yeah. we like it. A little writer, a little writer zinger there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, over on the game subreddit, as in any subreddit, it wasn't any better. This isn't just perks like increased stash space or larger secure pouch. Reddit user Dry Mixture 257 said, This is blatant. You get a giant head start in front of everyone else. Any other good extraction shooters out there? They added. Hmm. We'll talk about that at the end of the episode. Uh, the game even got dunked on by the Helldivers 2 Twitter account. Other devs dunking on them. This is bad. Uh, which posted, be sure to check out the deals in the acquisition center today. With prices so low, they're practically unheard of. <laughs> True believers can grab the CM21. <laughs> Thank you very much for the rim shot. Uh, True believers can grab the CM21 trench paramedic for only 250 SC, featuring increased pocket size and extra stims. Of those big pockets. Finally, Battlestate Games COO Nikita Boyanov responded on Reddit to the negative feedback in the best possible way by dumping a bunch of legalese. Uh, Charlotte, you got a law degree. Put that to use and break this down for us. Not in America, I don't, but I can do my best. <laughs> he started off by claiming that the PvE game mode is not DLC, adding, DLC, in our understanding, is the major additions to the game, including various functionality and content that are released after the official release of the game as a themed DLC pack. He added that, this specific functionality of the PvE mode is necessarily located entirely on a separate network infrastructure because essentially you play on our servers only in closed mode. At this stage, it is not possible to launch all players who are EOD holders. Right now, we simply do not have the required amount of resources for this. We have to charge $250 <laughs> our hands are tied. Oh my gosh, I read this uh, in real time and was like, what the fuck are they doing? All right. So this doesn't count because they say that it does not count. It is not DLC because they say it's not DLC. Uh, also, if it even if it did count, they couldn't afford it anyway. So, I mean, how about that? There. 
<laughs> and now I've explained it. <laughs> and everyone will be happy. No, that was terrible. Went over poorly. Uh, the company did try to make amends, though, in that original post. They were offering EOD owners six months of PVE, high priority matchmaking, and other features. But uh, it just really didn't touch on the core issue. Players felt they'd already paid for this content. On April 28th, Battlestate Games backed down a bit more, even if they reiterated that the PvE mode isn't DLC. Bulyanov announced that EOD owners would receive full PvE access at no additional cost, scrapping the six-month stipulation, but it would not be immediate due to server capacity limitations. It's not DLC. It's not DLC. Don't say it's DLC. And there was another catch. Access would be rolled out in waves with no clear timeline or details, of course. Uh, the company also removed the prioritized matchmaking promise for EOD owners, citing the need to maintain balance among all players. Yeah, but that was, that existed before the, Never mind. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I've also apologized, writing, unfortunately, I somehow did not foresee the fact of such a reaction, and now I have drawn conclusions for my future decisions. Uh, the concessions did little to calm uh, the escape from Tarkov base down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In a widely upvoted post, Reddit user Liam Lely, we'll go with that, called for fans to continue boycotting the game and wrote, They think we're all stupid fucking drones with big wallets. They hate you and want your money. They hate you and want your money. Jeez, Louise. Uh, the, whole, the whole situation is just another chapter in Battlestate Games' tumultuous history. This is the same studio that in 2016 said there would be no female characters in the game because women can't handle that amount of stress, a comment for which they later apologized. I assure you, I am constantly handling an extreme amount of stress. Uh, oh, and the same studio also employs DMCA takedowns against YouTubers who criticize them. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. So, uh, while Battlestate and his fans have often had an <laughs> uneasy relationship, to say the least, this is definitely taking it to an entirely new, and possibly beginning of the end, level. Yeah, if they don't have the resources to to fuel this kind of expansion, and they're just having to pass their costs directly onto the players, the last thing you can do is start shedding players. Then you just have to keep raising costs. So, uh, I don't know, Bruce, you were noting that there's a new, there's a new, uh, there's a new shooter on the front page of Steam that has coincidental timing right now, right? Yeah, just released. Uh, when you're watching this episode, it may already be like a day old, but it's called Gray Zone Warfare, and it's the, I'm looking at top sellers on Steam. It's number one. Um, and this was something that I saw people posting in the Tarkov Reddit, uh, subreddit, where they were saying like, just get away from Tarkov, go play this game on Steam. It's 35 bucks. Uh, it's, you know, it's not going to be as good as Tarkov out of the gate, obviously, because Tarkov has had years of development. But um, this is when you start to really... I feel like a uh, worry your player base is when they're like, oh, you know what? Uh, you don't get all that stuff. This isn't DLC and it's also $250. Like that's crazy. This is just, I was, I was watching this happen in real time for Tarkov and I couldn't, I was like, they are fucking up at every turn. Like there was literally everything they came out and said, I was just like, this is the stupidest shit I've ever heard. So, um, so I like, I was, I, and I like Tarkov. I played a lot of it. So I was super bummed about it. Rare to hear you, uh, speak so strongly about like, usually you're, usually you can find some middle ground, but yeah, this is just bad all around, huh? And they're just fucking it up. Um, Charlotte, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like normally, like I would side with your usual stance, Bruce, which is speak with your wallet. If you don't like the things devs are doing, don't pay for it. But it doesn't even seem like this is a realistic option for anyone to pay for. Like... You're not even getting like that much stuff. It, 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 it seems like it's priced specifically to not be bought. Like it, it, is, it is prohibitive. So like, I, I don't know, try out this other shooter, I guess. I, I like, it's just bad business practice. Like there's, you know, what's, I don't know. I'm gonna try to see this from their perspective. You don't know how monetizable your audience is until you try to monetize them. And they might be looking at something like Star Citizen and being like, People are okay paying $500 for some bullshit. Uh, we can get like half that. Um, and they tried to like angle out as, as much to justify that purchase. And the thing is, I still think people are willing to pay $250 for a game. They just have to be, they have to be kind of like wined and dined a little more. They have to be battle passed over the course of a year to get that amount of money. You can't like, it's, I think it's the sticker shock to be honest. And that's, that's me like negating all the other emotional aspects about how this was communicated which is the thing that occurs to me too. This is a very clear instance of the value 
of having a community team that can tell you what people think because he admitted he didn't think people thought of DLC in that way. And I could see that being a communications breakdown. Like they just talk about DLC in their studio a particular way and they assumed everybody knew what that meant. But if you had somebody that read over your post and was like, don't say that because it's gonna go over like this, maybe listen to them or have them on staff in the first place. Uh, I, eh, it's just, uh, I, I don't see recognition of like soft skills, community skills, or even PR or communication in games media, which kind of makes sense because we're kind of doing that for them some of the time, but this was a clear case where it failed terribly. <laughs> uh, so that's fun, kind of fun to observe. Um, yeah, the, the last, I guess the last coda I have is a cautionary tale for gamers is that um, a games as service game is going to want you to invest in it, but that's exactly why you shouldn't because it's going to change. Everything loses engagement over time. It's just like entropy, a show loses viewers or whatever. So if you have a game as service game that's earning money in a particular way, there's going to come a day where they have to change how that works to try to get more money or expand their audience. They're gonna mess with the formula somehow on a fundamental level. So keep that in mind. Uh, if any games of service anything makes a promise forever, they're probably not going to keep it. And that's like just kind of the state of things. So yeah, don't invest in a, in a game that's promising that it will shift under your feet, essentially. Man, they just, they just really fucked it up just real, real bad. Uh, hey, speaking of which, people who have not fucked it up, today's Inside Games, Inside Gamers, everybody who signed <laughs> that free Stellar Blade petition. <laughs> yes, this is a bit of a follow-up. And uh, it's, so this is an easy thing to laugh at. And I, I'm going to do that at the same time as unironically, well, semi-ironically celebrating it. So it turns out censorship is real, you guys. They actually did edit a couple of the costumes in Stellar Blade. And this is after promising that it would not be censored at all. Everyone assumed that Sony did it, so uh, they made a petition. Change.org, the only way that you change things in this world, and it's got a decent amount of signatures. But the thing that I want to... Oh, it's also got uh, video responses, which are a delight. But what I'd like Ooh. to point out is that everyone's being civil so far, on that petition at least. Even the video replies are, are just like dudes being like, I want to see some titties, and what's wrong with that? You know what? Nothing. And as long as that's where it ends... <laughs> Everything's in bounds, and you guys are expressing yourselves in a socially responsible way. Even if uh, planting a flag on a giant anime titty mound is a weird, weird, weird place to put it, but I, I just want to like I wanted to comment that like okay, there's some civility creeping back in to dudes who just want to stare at jugs. I, I never thought I'd be uh, <laughs> nostalgic for that kind of guy, that slice of the culture, until I saw like some like I think discussion somewhere that it's actually woke to have boobs in your game. Like, like I think it was something along the line, like how like football oh. and beer are gay now, and it's just like, come on, what are we, what are we doing? This is a bridge too oh, yeah. far. Like, let these guys have uh, have their thing. We can't. <laughs> We can't be doing this. We can't be doing this. Those are my favorite Reddit posts when they somebody will show a picture of like a super shredded like girl and she's so super attractive. And they're like, "This is so gay. Look at her abs." Yeah, this, I'm like, what? Yeah, what? This is super gay, actually. That what? I'm so attracted to her. And don't look into that any further. <laughs> it's like, what? I don't understand. Oh man. Oh, this so is am good. I supporting LGBTQ by playing Stellar Blade? Is that where we're at? Actually, just liking boobs is allyship now. Okay. Finally, I can show up to the parade. Yeah, no, yeah, we're <laughs> we're happy to have you. You know what? At the end of that, uh, at the end of that, one of those posts on that petition said, "Quote: Let the gamers be gamers. Let the gamers be gamers." And I just, we all got to say amen to that. We got to say amen because that's that's absolutely true. Um, we got some patrons. Some inside games patrons that support the Patreon every uh, every month that have always been gamers, even when the going gets rough. Ian McGee, DJ Kento, Shaky Pants, and Brandon Young. And the going's always rough for gamers. That much is clear. Uh, <laughs> and as such, we've got a couple of gamers that have actually represented gamer kind to the UN. That's what a paragon they are. Oh. <laughs> Matt Bogenberger, Cash Putnam, Greg Wolf, UESC Battleroid, and J Embers eighty seven. Thank you for your service. <laughs> 